I find it quite rewarding to achieve a goal under the power of my own human muscle. And I'm always surprised when other people are surprised that I would, for example, walk three kilometers out onto Lake Nipissing to go fishing for an evening. Or that I would cross country pulling a sled that weighs as much as I do almost to maybe catch trout in a backwoods lake. So, you know, I think the memory of the trip is that much crisper in your mind if you suffer a little bit on the way. Um, but the rewards are great as well. I'm always happy to have a bit of exercise and strengthen my muscles. And those things also make for great memories. And, you know, we set out on this trip. Our intent was to spend a night on the lake in our pop-up shelter. We'd had a goal of doing a winter camp. And so that was our our main goal, but we were also really hoping to get into a bunch of perch, uh, that maybe there would be a few pickerel, and especially at night, because we're going to stay the night, that we might catch some ling. And you'll see how this adventure unfolds. And uh, we met some of our goals and not others. There's that whole case. beautiful Lake Nipissing. We just set up the Eskimo Fatfish 9416 which is a seven to nine person ice hut if you can believe the dimensions on that. Uh, but for tonight this is going to be our hotel on ice. So we just uh, just popped it up, screwed it all down, set the guy lines and now we're going to make it comfy inside, drill our holes, make some beds and uh, we're here for the night. So we're hoping to catch the afternoon perch bite and uh, see if there's anything biting tonight as well. So we're just going to uh, drill some holes and then arrange our living space around our fishing holes. This is a design that I've been playing with for an auger guard. I haven't really been happy with the ones that usually come with the auger and so I've just been experimenting with a piece of PVC pipe with a groove cut in it so it slides over the blade. This is a fixed cap that's glued on and then this is a loose cap and it's got holes that line up with holes on here and it's all held together with this pin. So the shape of these huts because they bulge out at the sides, they make it pretty easy to drill inside.
arms. Yeah, there's a lot of ice. Yep. Oh, wow. Maybe we're just gonna fish one hole. We'll be too tired. <laughs> we're gonna fall over when it happens. Ooh, it's slippery. Alright, it's close quarters, but we're all set up. So I'll give you the the brief tour. We've got uh, two lines in the back corner of the tent. There is a door in that back corner. We've got two cots side by side, all set to sleep. There's Delphine. And a couple of windows open. So a third fishing hole off the back of the bed over here. That's my pelican sled, which we are using as a cook table. This is our main door to get in and out. And over off of Delphine's side, there is the fourth hole. So we've got our Got our four lines and we're all set up. Fish bite should happen any time now and we might just uh, relax a little bit. Lie down, keep warm, maybe get something to eat and uh, we'll be all right. So I'll show you some of the stuff that we brought for this trip. All right, so most stuff is in this cooler. This is not just food, but I'll give you the tour of what we brought. So we have a couple of fillet knives uh, a couple of hot water bottles in case it gets really cold. We have also a kettle so we can boil up water for tea and for hot water bottles. Um, I've got my headlamp, some extra ice screws, a plate, a spork. I'm going to leave this out so I always try and remember to bring a hand towel anytime I'm out in the winter doing stuff, especially fishing where your hands get fish slimed or wet with water because it's a really good way to prevent your hands from freezing if you can dry them off. We have a couple of mugs. We have Miss Vicky's chips, which my friend Nick Harfield would say are mandatory on any ice fishing adventure. Got a toque for when I'm sleeping. Got a couple of cans of propane. So these are going to run our little cook stove. It's like a two burner Coleman style. And uh, we also brought a Mr. Buddy heater uh, just to take the chill off of our cabin. Roll of toilet paper, always handy to have on an adventure. Pound of butter, can't do without the butter. Pancake mix and Somewhere there's an egg that hopefully survived this journey. Here are some deer chops that I thawed out. So this is gonna be part of our supper. Some of my favorite camping cheese. Beamster, and it's nice and dry so it lasts a long time on a trip. It does not get slimy. Bacon. Can't do without the bacon. And what else have we got here? Three kinds of Ontario craft brews, which we will feature later. Oh, I brought something for you, babe. 
a porno magazine Yay. for Delphine. Look at that. <laughs> Happy That's birthday. Awesome. <laughs> yeah, it's a little early. David Bowie, the Rolling Stone. This is my spoon. Oh, a spoon. So I forgot my... <laughs> Delphine forgot a spoon, so she's using the tin part of a uh, tea light. All right. So that kind of covers all of our gear. All right. It's five o'clock somewhere, so... I'm not sure if this is an appropriate beer to be drinking on a frozen lake. Skinning, dipping stout, brewed in Gravenhurst, Ontario, with passionate hands and what kind of hearts? No, skilled hands. Skilled hands. And passionate hearts. And passionate hearts. So we're going to give it a try. I have not had this beer before. Cheers. Cheers. That's good. Mm -hmm. Tastes like That's chocolate good and roasted malts. <laughs> yeah. It's just like the label said. So, Gravenhurst, which is in uh, central Ontario, it's a very famous part of Ontario for um, camping and cottaging. Here's some stats on this beer, if that means anything to you. The IBUs are 35. Yeah, I like that one. That's really good. I brought some chips to go with it. So we were set up around three. Oh, you got a bite. Oh, oh, oh. oh. How come I've got the rod now? Beer. I was gonna say here hold my beer it's just <laughs> it's past four o'clock and we haven't had a bite yet and then and then uh, a fish just interrupted our beer tasting <clears throat> just maybe set it back up and see if uh, see if it comes back so these are Lime and black pepper chips, these are Delphi's favorite. And they're good with craft beer. Oh, there it is again. Well, that's you know? a pretty light little bounce. Well, that's our first short beer review. We're gonna try and catch a fish now, so I'll try and, <laughs> try and get it on camera if it happens. it again let me see it arch just rip down one of those light um windows rip arch <laughs> not right in front of the mirror <laughs> highlighted there don't put it over put it over there there we go oh that's beauty yay first one Let's see if i can you might need your mouth tool okay can i just toss over my belt it's there. Where's your rod? Oh, it's on the Yep. Yay, I'm so excited. Still got the middle on here, so we'll put it back down and uh, see what happens now. Maybe there's a school of them. Well, now it's five o'clock here, <laughs> not just five o'clock somewhere. So we're going to try our second Ontario Craft Brew. So this is a Muskoka Brewery. Brew. Oh, there's not a lot of light there, but maybe you will see this guy shivering away. So this is called the Schnicht Stout. Schnicht apparently is a word to describe that gasp for breath feeling when you plunge into a Muskoka Lake for a chilly late night dip. So we're feeling a little bit Schnicked ourselves as it's <laughs> chilly out here. Let's give this one a go. Oh yeah, these ones were holding a little, a little more pressure than the other ones, eh? Oh, that tastes good. You can really taste the coffee. Yeah, there's a Muskoka coffee oh. roaster, and this one is 
infused with Muskoka Roastery's signature lumberjack coffee. I could swing an axe. Yeah? Yeah. <laughs> you could swing an axe? Yeah. Hmm. Lumberjack coffee. There you go. All right. That's good. I like the stouts. Me too. I'd rather drink that than like a Coors Light or a Bush it's or a, a beer. It's not a beer. I know it's not a beer. It's Beef? like a yeah. carbonated water with <clears throat> a little bit of alcohol, right? Yeah. No offense if you like a Coors Light. <laughs> it is cool that their cans change color when they're cold, but these taste pretty good. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, our uh, chips. They got eaten right up. Not by me, I think it was Delphine ate most of them, but. Boo, now all good. we have is venison. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all we have left is venison. <laughs> Which will cook pretty soon because it'll start to get dark soonish. Uh, we've only got one little window open in here right now, but uh, we did not get any more bites since our last bite. We're hoping that there is an afternoon bite that hits. Or, uh, when it gets darker, we're going to put some bells on the rods so we can hear if there's a bite. And hopefully, hopefully something bites in the night. Some nice ling, or some night feeding pickerel, or mm -hmm. I don't know what. So we'll see what happens. That's good. Someone's putting a couple holes in. Yeah, I hear a gas auger out there. Um, if you ever have a chance on Google Earth, if you see a winter image of Lake Nipissing near North Bay, Ontario, there are thousands of huts out here sprinkled all over the lake, but they're concentrated in certain zones. So there are a few within a hundred meters of us. Um, and they're, they're everywhere. <clears throat> so we are March the 10th mm -hmm. today and the regulations on Lake Nipissing are that the season closes on March the 15th. 15th. So there are just a few days left and people I think are making the most of this weekend. We saw lots of people out fishing today. The weather is decent. It was minus one but there was a bit of a wind chill. You can see that it's frosty in here. We brought a little propane heater and we have lots of sleeping bags, so hopefully the wind chill is not bad tonight. It is supposed to go down to minus 12. Um, so we've prepared for that with a couple of hot water bottles and these cots to get us up off the ground. Uh, the Mr. Buddy is a good buddy of ours. The Mr. Buddy heater, which uses these one pound propane tanks, which I did not bring very many of so we're gonna try and ration the use of that maybe by like two in the morning we'll be wishing that I had brought some extras but <laughs> we'll see hopefully we have a fish update for you soon oh babe what is it I don't know oh my Come god see. Okay, I'm excited wait I can't get it's over there lots of pull there's a big one oh 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 my god, you got it! Son Look at of that. A... That's probably... Oh my goodness, that's amazing! <laughs> that might be a keeper pickerel. Where's the... Uh... Look at that. Um, funnily enough... I know, on the, the cooler. Ruler is on the inside yeah. of the... It's on the outside of the cooler. Yeah. Kay. So we'll carry this over. Try not to get fish guts all over the bed. Big fish slime. Listen, and it'd be worth it. Yeah. <laughs> I'll put down my tea. Oh, it's right there facing good. So, zero. It's past the 46. That's a keeper. That's a keeper. Yay! Oh my god, that's awesome. Look at that. Our third fish, we better get those two lines set again. 
Because he won anyway, so it flopped around too much. There we go. Ah, oh, it's got a really good prickly kind of shape to it. It's so nice. Yay for us! That's going to be so tasty. Alright. <laughs> Do you have a lighter, babe? Yes. I'm going to boil up some water. And I'm heating up some butter in a pan. We actually brought in some leftover pasta ravioli. with ravioli with cheese and spinach. Cheese and spinach. So that's going to be our first course. And then we'll see how hungry we are for uh, venison after that. Let's see here. There we go. Oh my god. <laughs> it looks like a lot of a lot of raviolis. I might not have room for venison after this. Do you want this? Yeah. Thank you. Well, my one's a bit bigger. Where is it? I don't know. Blue I think one? it also went into the cooler. Oh, I know where it is. Holding the chips. Oh, you didn't have hand to go over, babe. You got a handle. Perfect. Perfect. Like an oven now. There we go. And here's your tea ravioli. Supper of champions. <laughs> All right. Here we go. Oh, there's some good heat coming off of this too. I can feel it over here. So we have water boiling for tea. We have leftover cheese and spinach raviolis from our supper last night that we packed out with us. We're going to warm that up. That's our first course. And then, depending on if we're hungry or not, our next course will be little venison steaks. Also to come, a third Ontario Craft Beer Review. The pesto is in the uh, bag. Alright. Here is a bunch of warmed up pasta, which we are going to, and pesto, ravioli and pesto. So we're going to start in on that, and then we may or may not cook some more supper. And we are planning to fish all night, but it's getting a little bit, a little bit dark here to, uh, to do updates, so I might do a morning a morning update, give you the updates from whatever happened in the night, and uh, we'll go from there. Alright, so we had some big excitement with a keeper size pickerel on Lake Nipissing, which is one that's greater than 46 centimeters, and we uh, have the one perch. We had the small pickerel, which we let go, so that footage was shot on Delphine's cell phone camera, and before we get too tired, and the night draws on. We are giving our third review. We're doing it in night shot mode because it's pretty dark. <laughs> and as soon as we turn on the lights, it kind of washes everything out. Um, so we oh, are drinking the salty caramel truffle. Who would not want to drink a beer called salty caramel truffle? Handcrafted with no preservatives. And this is a Muskoka brewery. All natural, premium and pure. Let's give it a try. Okay. Hoping the third one's hard. Yeah. <laughs> Cheers. This beer review has been brought to you by Night Shot Mode. Cheers. <laughs> and a pickerel. And a pickerel.
it's not as flavorful as I thought it would be, but it's good. No, well, because I think I said they were all stouts, but this one's maybe not a stout, uh, right? The other two are advertised as stouts, and this is a salty caramel truffle, uh, which 5% alcohol, unfiltered. See any other descriptors? Skoka Brewery, it's in Bracebridge, Ontario. Well, what does it say? In cottage country, stopping for creamy decadent ice cream is as traditional as cracking open a cold brew. <laughs> so it only makes sense to bring the two together by teaming up with Kawartha Dairy to create this robust, chocolatey, box-style beer infused with salted caramel. So it's just a beer. I wouldn't say it's just a beer. <laughs> you can't say that a salty caramel truffle beer is just a beer. For kindergarten, because you really go for ice cream and crack a beer. I don't know what you're talking about. They go hand in hand, it says. Yeah. It is a lighter beer than the other two, for yeah. sure. But it's pretty tasty. I knew we didn't save the best for last. <laughs> <laughs> cool. All right. Our cheers again. Our three beer night. We're not done yet. We have bells on the rods. We are listening for more fish. We're probably going to wrap up soon, as in wrap up in sleeping bags and stay warm. We're the running our going. heater event every once in a while. We have a kettle full of hot water, so we're going to fill up some hot water bottles and uh, see what other adventures the night brings, and we will, we will do some more filming in the morning. Hey! Another Piccarelli. That one's just a little bit too small. Yeah. We're gonna let that one go. I'll help you out with it, babe. I don't know about this camera here. I'll just set it down. I'll take my net over. Oh, he took it way deep. Uh-oh. Way deep. We're gonna have to cut yeah. that line and let him go. Do you want a picture before we do? Yeah. I'll just, uh, I'll just throw on the video, actually. Okay, it's going. Oh, can you hold the line so I can cut it? There he is. Okay. Nice little nipsy pickerel. Okay. Oh, a little bit of blood on him. Uh -oh. That's too bad. Uh -oh. Probably be alright, though. That was a quick release. I'm just going to rinse first before I uh, blow you up our towel. <clears throat> so it's pickerel o'clock, I guess. So, this line's uh, everywhere? No, well, it is, but. intent on losing its hooks. Yeah. Okay. So, I don't even know if I'm in the camera here, but that was our third, I'm sideways because I'm bent over, third pickerel. We let that one go, let the first one go. The second one was a keeper. We'll retie a hook on there, rebait it, and see what else happens. are costing us a lot of hooks. Alright, so we got up at around 1.30. There was that one mm -hmm. 
picker on the line that we let go and we had a pee we got settled back in and then nothing happened <laughs> all night on the lines um, now it's uh, six or seven o'clock so we just made some tea we also folded up the one bed so we have more space in here so we now have one bed that's a good bench and we're gonna think about making a little bit of breakfast some bacon starting with bacon mm -hmm. and uh, we'll go from there I thought there would be a morning bite and if there is uh, it's not here or if there <laughs> is maybe it hasn't happened yet but we're hoping for a few more fish bites before we pack up and head out Must have been. Is that a premonition? It shook off because I was messing around with this bell too much. That's too bad. Maybe there's a morning bite. Another little pickerel. Like they're not tipping the tip up and they're taking the hooks in deep. I don't really know what the solution to that is. See you later, buddy. So, maybe there's a morning bite. Well, that's what we thought last night. There was only one perch, right? So we'll see what happens here. So in the end we were really happy with the way that the pop-up shelter worked. We It got cold but we stayed warm enough. We had enough sleeping bags. We ran the heater really sparingly. We found that the cook stove actually heated faster than the heater but it probably also was burning more fuel to do so. We brought way more food than we could eat and so some of the more interesting things that we brought to eat we didn't actually get to. And in fact when I emptied the cooler out at the end of the trip I was really surprised to find that cheese in the bottom. I'd completely forgotten about it. Um, and we, you know, we really, we just ate potato chips and um, all that pasta. Uh, so that was, felt a little bit silly, but it was also really nice to come home with food and to come home with some really spectacular fish. I was surprised to catch four pickerel. Um, I don't usually catch that many pickerel on the, pickerel fishing on the lake hasn't been that great previously but um, there's been new management decisions made which I believe have really led to a turnaround in the pickerel fishery and in the next year or two there are going to be lots of big pickerel on that lake. So you know again we we're disappointed to catch only two perch but it was still exciting to catch some perch and we had really hoped to catch some ling which typically bite at night uh, but it might be a little bit late in the season to catch them as shallow as we ended up being which is also funny if you know anything about Lake Nipissing. It might be one of the only lakes in this area where you can walk for three kilometers and still be in only eight or ten feet of water. Um, so that, you know, wasn't very conducive to catching a ling either. So, you know, overall, very happy with this trip. We cooked that pickerel up afterwards. It was spectacular. It was very delicious. Uh, it was big enough to share with family. And we have great memories. And I, accomplishment of completing an adventure under the power of our own human muscles, surviving the elements, thriving in the elements, being comfortable, and uh, having an adventure to share with each other and talk about with friends. So we will definitely be doing more of these adventures in the future. And one of the things that we would really like to try out is to make uh, one of the windows of that pop-up hut a, um, I guess it's called a stove jack or a chimney sleeve to be able to put a small folding wood stove in there which would keep it really warm. I think it would heat it up much faster than the propane heater and keeping the stove going fairly constantly would also help to keep the condensation out of that tent. So the, my only concern is that 
the fabric on the inside is treated and you are not supposed to obviously with any materials I guess make contact with it with flame um, so that'll be something that we'll trial in the future and see how well it works out thanks for following along hope you enjoyed the adventure there are many more to come and uh, you can subscribe or like and there are also lots of great pictures from this and other adventures on Delphine's Instagram at Delphine Collier and I will link that below.